Oh, very good. Welcome, everyone. The episode session to uh, hopefully have a good witness and demonstration of what we talked about earlier in the day. And I was talking a little bit about it's simply that I can create myself which Jesus calls the authority problem. Authority, author, the belief that I can author myself any way I want to be, in form. That would be the belief under what people call reincarnation. To try to invent yourself and then reinvent yourself and then reinvent yourself and keep reinventing yourself until you realize the impossibility you could be the author of yourself. Part of the belief that I can be the author of myself, if myself was created by God and I am Christ or I am Spirit, it must be that reality is Spirit. Where an identity in form must be the belief that I can become the author of reality. Uh, a lot of New Age teachings, that's basically the core of New Age teachings. There's an aspect of helpfulness in it because it is honoring the idea that your mind is powerful. And that you're not at the mercy of some kind of external force. You're not just a, a figure in somebody else's dream. It's a kind of a New Age idea, but it's not really an idea from Jesus. Jesus, again, is very clear. God is your author. God is your creator. You were created in spirit, and that's the fact. That's the fact of it. And then, self, or invent myself over and over again, make a self different from the self that God created is the authority problem. So. The first episode we're going to watch tonight is a mirror episode, and the episode is, is called USS Callister, and what we're going to see is the, there is a, a gentleman, virtual reality program. Interesting use of words together. Virtual reality program. If reality is spirit, then the cosmos of time and space must be virtual to generate a, a virtual reality or avatars or uh, AI uh, boyfriends and girlfriends and gurus. You know, we don't, the world, the projected world is. reality program. So it has programmed time and space to play out everything that we believe in our consciousness. So when we perceive a situation, basically the situation, so you might say even the idea of a group of us here watching a, a video episode tonight is it's, it's just a projection of a belief system that involves time and space. Movies and computers and so on and so forth, but it's just a projection of belief. And everything, as he says in Lesson 152, power of decision is my own. Everything is perceived until you believe it. And so the goal might be to empty your mind of all false ego beliefs, all time concepts, and forgive yourself for the attempt at generating intelligence uh, character or in an artificial intelligence virtual reality. That's it's like a game that the ego is using the power of the mind to play a game, and it's to play a game of hide and seek. And see 
the ego says, see if you can find some idols that, that give you something that will satisfy you. But they don't. No matter how many times we reconfigure it and try to reprogram action. Another beautiful prophet from over here in Europe, Mick Jagger. <laughs> I, can't, I can't get no satisfaction. And I tried, and I tried, and I tried, and I tried. <laughs> I can't get no. <laughs> yourself, for it will fail and you will weep each time an idol falls. So, in this episode, uh, it's, it's like a starship uh, episode where this Robert Daly is perceives himself in this uh, kind of this uh, company that he works for. He perceives himself as a victim, as uh, powerless, unrecognized, um, and without value. And so you might say he. He uses his programming skills to generate an alternate virtual reality world where he is not powerless and unimportant and victimized. He seems to have control over the others. It, it's like, this is a good episode to see that when the mind believes it can make up an identity apart from God, which would be In some phases of the dream, it dreams that it is powerless and weak and a victim of other dream figures, like just a like a cog in a wheel, or just like a a person is at the mercy of forces outside of itself and people outside of itself. So, in some phases of the dream, it chooses the inferiority position. And in some phases of this artificial majority position, so so you can see that that basically, in order to make yourself different from the way you were created by God, you have to believe in differences, and then the projected world or to draw forth witnesses of that inequality, and. Jesus was basically teaching that we're all one in heaven and on earth the way that we approach the light is we approach the light through perfect equality. Same rope, side by side, arm in arm, hand in hand. No one ahead, no one behind. It's like the old thing, don't ask me to lead, don't ask me to follow, walk beside me on the self same road as is the, the way that we reach forgiveness. In terms of personalities, equality would, would be basically seeing that, in the end, that I am mind and all of the... In terms of the way people could relate to it, people like a sense of perfect equality, where there's, it's humbleness, there's no one higher, there's no one lower. There is no one more powerful, there is no one less powerful. It's perfect equality. How the ego will try to counteract a belief in weakness with fantasies of superiority, fantasies of control. And this is uh, there where differences are perceived as being real and some are the people that have, and some of the people that have not. Some are the people that are the leaders, some are the followers. But in the end, it's the resistance to the light that and, and it's following the Holy Spirit and the guidance of the Holy Spirit and becoming obedient to your intuitive self, to your higher self, to the spirit within that leads to the freedom. A lot of times when we Yes, we could see monasteries and convents, and and monasteries. Sometimes there was the abbot 
uh, of the monastery who is like the leader of the monastery and then there's there's pre so even in religion we see hierarchies of the leaders and positions of leadership and the followers but but Jesus is saying that if you truly follow your intuition and you are obedient, not to people per se, it will bring you into this state of unified awareness and equality. So it's going to undo the pursuit of looking outside yourself for somebody to tell you what to do or to an intuitive inner guidance that, that leads you to start seeing the sameness of everything and everyone, in which there are no hierarchies, in which uh, everything is is equal. It's it's tempting to judge um, spiritual development by years of practice or various um, artificial um, achievements and so on and so forth. The reason I say artificial is because anything that's really an, an achievement, a detachment from form and realizing the, the, the alignment of the spirit, the unification of the spirit, now that would be, you could call that achievement because it's remembering what's really achievement or a, an experience that you would want to embrace, but it's not about looking out to the form to, to find others or to try to emulate others' behaviors or compare yourself with others. It's all about questioning beliefs and the belief in the self-concept and the belief in the world. So we will see that this um, character, Robert Daly, He's a virtual, virtual reality programmer who has invented trick. He sees himself as victim of everyone at his workplace where he is meek and weak and doesn't know how to communicate. But in his space game fantasy, his time space, he places himself as the Captain Supreme. <laughs> he rules over all the characters from his working life. So he takes all the characters of his working life that seem to not value him and treat him poorly. His own invention, where he is the supreme captain, and he basically tells them what to do, and they don't have any choice because it's his game. He's the inventor of the game. That's a kind of a good analogy of what the ego is. By taking the power of the mind and then projecting out a world of, of hierarchies, of control, of categories, of boxes, of rules. Basically, this world has a lot of rules and to maybe they want to try to rule the world. Wasn't there a Tears for Fears song? Everybody wants to rule the world. There it is. Tears for tears. Things. It seems like the characters are seeking for power to avoid being powerless, to overcome weakness and meekness, to become all powerful. And throughout history, we had lots of examples of that. It was in. Uh, where was it? I think it was in uh, Belgium, I think, where they uh, where they had this this monument, this big thing that was built where Napoleon was stopped. The military leader, the little teeny man on the horse from France. So I went to this uh, this uh, in Belgium. I climbed all these steps to this uh, memorial at the top, and there was a museum at the bottom, so I... And she said, what is this place? What's this all about? I said, well, there was this war in history where this little man on a horse from France was trying to take over Europe, and he was heading over towards Sweden, where you live, but they stopped. 
a little little French man on the horse. It's, it's just a story, but the, that's the, the story. Uh, Hitler seemed to want to uh, take over the world in his own way. There's been leaders that have seemed to play complex, where it's like we will take over. We are the better race or the better, the more intelligent ones or whatever. We have more power, more military power, we will take over the weaker ones. And then the flip side of that is taken over, the ones that are conquered. But these dreams of superiority and inferiority are all ego projections. And this happens even in relationships, you know, when you're in a relationship and all of a sudden you feel some dynamics happening. Who's going to be the ruler of the relationship? You know, who is the one in control? Or who wears the pants? Or whatever they say, all kinds of, <laughs> of, of everything. You know, it's the same dynamic that the ego is playing out, even if be the strong one, who's going to be the weak one, who's going to play the leader, who's going to play the follower. And Jesus is telling us, you, you love playing both roles. When you play the follower role, you put the other one in the leader role, so that you can you put the other one in your mind, in the follower role, so you can play the leader role. And he's saying, you are trying to obscure perfect equality. You know, if God is your creator, you're the same. Mm -hmm. It must be. It can't be that one is better or worse, or higher or lower, or more important or less important. But it seems like in the linear context, to see perfect equality seems something that's going to take a long, 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 long time. Just this instant. You need to, to start to come back to the present moment in the presence of the Holy Spirit in this moment, and that will bring you to the perfect equality. It's not really a matter of time, it's just a matter of your willingness to be present. You want to be running to the light because the world is never satisfied. No matter how many times we try to play this virtual reality over and over and over, it's never satisfying because we're looking for an experience of love. Playing the games of time and space. So let's watch this one. This is a little Black Mirror episode called USS Callister. So you can see uh, he's supposed to be kind of co-running the company, but he's very much taking a back seat to Walton. And you might say that the human personality construct along with are made by the ego for the purpose of obscuring reality or obscuring truth. So the entire invention of linear time and everything that's part of the cosmos it, Jesus says, the yeah, emotion underneath. This, this is the world that love makes the world around. The world, the cosmos, was made in Hebrew. In fact, it says in the workbook of A Course in Miracles, the world was made as an attack upon God. To give you the, the sense of the vengeance behind the making of this strength mm -hmm. device, this construct. It's made in hatred. That's why forgiveness is necessary to open the mind back to the light. Made in hatred, you know, the ego made it as, a, as, a, as an ingenious device where some aspects of it would seem more attractive than others. Some aspects of the projected world would be so attractive that you would get by pursuing what it deems as attractive aspects of time and space and avoiding the unattractive aspects. And in this um, little scenario we're seeing, you can see that Robert is significant, he feels uh, unnoticed, he feels very much inferior 
And in fact, there's, a, there's this woman who's just got her first day on the job and she's excited. She's thrilled to meet him. Inspires him as getting some sense of personal recognition. But it's important to realize that that's that's the game that the ego is playing with all these personalities. It wants personal recognition. It wants notoriety. It wants to be important on its own terms, in a, in a relative way. Remember Einstein said everything in time and space is relative, and the ego is using the personalities to try to promote self this self and make a better self and a better version and yet a better version. Like they have software upgrades, you get 2.0, 3.0, or, or iPhone versions, you know, it's 7 and 8 and 9 and 10. And systems higher and higher. And really this, this is the motive underneath all education. In heaven there's no need for education because there is no such thing as learning. Everything just is. Uh, and speak. This would put a period at the end of those two words, God is. But even learning is tied into self-improvement. It's tied into a body belief, to time, and to improve the self. And it's very strong that you're not. When you already are everything, to play the game of pretend like I can get better at being something I'm not. What does that even mean, better at something that I'm not? So things start to go deeper with the spirit within, then there's aspects of perception that will seem to fall away as well. You know, maybe you won't have the same friends, or you won't hang out with the same people, or you won't have the same perceptual life Certain aspects of the dream world start to seem to disappear from your awareness as you see you have no more need of them. To the ego, this is distressing. You're isolating, you're, lo you're a loner, you're this, you're that, but actually, the consciousness. So we can see here, he's, he's gone from his company, out from the public version of his company, and then he's gone behind closed doors where he has, seems to have a whole apartment with the old relics from the past and history past and and being back there as an inventor where he can in, in use the imagination and the fiction and the fantasy in his mind to to counteract the the world that this is what happens this is why people need hobbies or need certain extracurricular pursuits or things because they're bored, they feel the world is too monotonous, it's too repetitive, it, it other things are invented to uh, to take away the, the boredom and the, the monotony and the repetition with something seen to be new, even though there's nothing new uh, in time and space. Uh, projection of the ego. So let's watch what he's doing here. He looks like he's uh, got his desk and then now he's going to go into his alternate uh, virtual reality where he uh, can play the game of superiority. And that's all got. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, this is giving us a metaphor for the ego made the world in hate and this is the ego's world. So that's why when we get to 28, the world I see holds nothing that I want. That's not a wish. That's that's something that we're to see the the validity of wanting something. If we want to know God, then the, the world I see most nothing that I want. If I want to be running to the light, so to speak, I want to be releasing 
the pursuit of things. And it fits with what we were talking about, seeing the neutrality of the body, investing the body with things that I believe it, it should be, it could be, it, it might be, or things that I wish it could do, or wish it could get me. Then the body, which device that can be used for communication then becomes part of the ego's getting mechanism and that's why in the world when, when corporations talk about uh, different populations and the term that I think the corporations use is consumers. Consumers are those that want to get, buy, consume products, food, all kinds of services of the ego, which is the getting mechanism, and then the body is used solely for the purpose of getting. And the mind, which perceives the, these hierarchies and these different personalities and variations and categories and and layers and layers and layers of complexity, basically it's it's just asleep and dreaming of, of a world completely unlike heaven and unlike reality. Little episode we're seeing, uh, he's he's taken something that that to of uh, when she was drinking her drink, uh, he's he's basically assimilated her as a character. And that's what the ego does, it just, it, it makes and invents the images and then it assimilates them into its program to get. And the whole program is this, keep on getting while the getting's good, get all that you can. When you've gotten it and Jesus, he's poking fun at this in the Course saying, the real world is not like the world you see. It has no stores where you buy endless things that you know. He's he's talking about money as green paper strips and piles of metal discs. He's he's poking fun at all the defense mechanisms of the body and the world that have been made real in in the egos in the real world and no reality in, in spirit. So we can see from this, this is kind of acting it out in an extreme way. And they're basically, the characters are saying, you know, you're part of, of Robert's world now. In one sense, the characters are aware that there is a very, very personal motive behind their environment and behind their personas. Start to realize that, that, that the ego belief system is underneath all that makes you a unique human being and all that makes this world kind of unique in its various uh, aspects. So when we talk about releasing the ego, that's what we're looking at, releasing that. And, and we're being taught by Jesus, it has to be through giving. Give as God gives, gives as you are instructed, and be obedient, not to your higher self to, and to the Holy Spirit within, who knows the way out of this false belief system. So. Even in convents and monasteries, you know, over the years, there they would take vows. If you really take a look at that, poverty, I always took to mean in the, in the most helpful sense, poverty is non-possessiveness. To take a vow of poverty, you, you can take a vow of poverty right now, and that's just, oh. Possessiveness because I don't want the control that's necessary to possess. I, reality doesn't control anything, it just is. So when I'm into con trying to control anything or anyone, I'm into possessiveness. 
forth. Chastity is, is defined in the dictionary as purity of thought. That's, that's another good vow. Non-possessiveness, purity of thought, and obedience is not obedience to a person or obedience to some. The Holy Spirit never commands and the Holy Spirit never demands. Well, well, that's good to know if you're going to be obedient to a presence that never commands and never demands. It's like the Holy Spirit offers an The Holy Spirit offers, um, you can even say suggestions. The Spirit makes the suggestions and then you decide whether or not to follow <laughs> the suggestions. And if you do follow them, you are led into high struggling and challenged and and this this little episode is is quite an enactment of the the authority problem but it also gives us more of a, a striking contrast to uh, error we, we don't want to be caught up into false obedience false alliances false associations false rules um, and b believe like they all are, are telling her. the mercy of, of Robert's mind. This is Robert's uh, TV show or, or Robert's uh, own invention, and they're just all voicing how uh, how they feel uh, Robert wants them to be. And, and that it could be extrapolated to the idea that the ego is the one that made up the world uh, to be a reflection of itself, you know, which is under the control. So, in this Prince of Eunice universe, part of the person I'm talking about, the ego, it made its world, and it controls everything of the world, the planets, the spheres, the people. It's basically given the parts, it's passed out all the parts. But the, that is helpful just to the extent that you can start to get a bit of a sense that this belief in being an autonomous with um, your own desires, your own past memories, your own future goals and ambitions, you know, it starts to rinse away as you start to get a sense of that who's, who's running the puppets, who's uh, handling the marionettes. And, and then you can start to feel like, wow, it's, it's going to take some mind training and some really guidance and joining in a way to be free of this tyranny. It's like a tyrannous, uh, it's like a tyrant who is made of make-believe world. So everything in the projected world that's perceived is, is based on closer at your, your belief system, your thoughts, you look closer at your preferences, your, your uh, opinions, you look at your uh, assumptions, you start to look, you know, you, you have a mind and you start to pay more attention to what, what am I wishing for? Even in the early days of psychology, was beginning with Sigmund Freud, for example, he had an aspect of the mind was the death wish. And you might say the ego itself is a death wish, so everything that it wants to be a certain way in specifics is the way it is because it's desired and wished. The temptation Why did she treat me that way? Why did he treat me that way? Uh, it's the, the belief that there's an external world that has nothing to do with, with the mind and that the characters act out autonomously. Version, oh yeah, what? Okay, if they're acting, acting autonomously, then some need to be punished or 
some need to be blamed for what they did wrong and so on and so forth. But it's not really seen that everything is acting out the way that's part of the mind training is first starting to retrain the mind to, to be aware of like what is it that I'm perceiving here and what is it that I want to happen. There's an interpretation of what I believe is happening. It's because of what I want to believe is happening. In the end, that's the I need do nothing solution where Jesus is saying to redemption, to find enlightenment does not require that you do anything. It's simply a different purpose for the world, to see the world differently. But so much of, of the do the right thing, you have to do more. I haven't done enough, you know, you feel the push, do more, do more, do more. It's all based on this driving force of egos trying to hold on to this association of, of... So these kind of little skits, this is like a little skit where the characters basically are all like, okay, it's the game's on pause and <laughs> you know, like, it's like they're not in the act until... Oh, it, there have been other movies that have been made. I think there was one called Existence, I remember from years ago, where the characters were just waiting for commands, or they were just kind of in a state of stasis until they were... The characters are all just acting things out, and but they're all based on, on beliefs and preferences and whims uh, that, in this case, is Robert's mind, but you can, you can see, if you start to see, wow, this is why I need to go for purity in my mind, because mm -hmm. without a pure desire for God, then it seems like the act of the world just, just of them. It's good when you, when you look at the whole metaphor, but you also get to the point where you realize that the people can't <clears throat> turn the tables on the ego, because the people... So there, this movie, there was episode that we're trying to rebel against Robert. But with The Course in Miracles, Jesus was given us the key. It's for lesson, for lesson 23, I can escape from the attack thoughts, judge not. And he says this is the only way that will work and nothing else will work. So, you know, it's pretty beautiful to think that we've been given such a tool and a manual to relinquish the belief that we can, we personally can escape. We just have to empty our mind of judgments. That's what Jesus did and he showed the way to us. And you know, they really, <laughs> I think we're used to seeing episodes like this, but it's, it showed, you know, the, the resistance that they felt to having authority. And the ego has just projected a world where it seems like different characters have authority positions, but it's, it's a trick. It's really not informed. So, take a little pause. Okay, our second showing of the day is called, we have taken a Blackberry episode and we have renamed it Ascension Through. So we are going to have in this uh, clip, this Blackberry episode, two people who come together, Frank and Amy, 
into a system of dating that is supposed to bring you together. Your soulmate. Mm. Imagine an app. It's a dating app. It's a very sophisticated dating app called, called Coach that is supposed to bring you together with your perfect match. And says, uh, Frank and em, em, Amy meet on a first date set up by a futuristic dating app called Coach. This digital coach sets them up in arranged relationships and promises to you with the ultimate compatible partner. This episode has a strong sense of destiny to it and starts to look at the purpose of relationships. The real question in relationship is not compatibility, it is to get in touch with unconscious beliefs. Why is it that I feel a particular way? It's very important to get very clear on what is it for, or forgiveness as your priority. As time goes on, Frank and Amy both find that there is a deeper purpose for these relationships beyond finding their ultimate match. While the ego uses relationships to fill a lack, the Holy Spirit uses relationships for mirroring to become aware of what blocks awareness of the light right now. The relationship mirrors back to your mind aspects that you have pushed out of awareness. Your brother leave, and when promises seem to be broken, it becomes a time for faith. The Spirit says this is not a reason for separation, but it is rather an opportunity for healing. Those all dark thoughts to each other, they experience true connection and forgiveness. Through the acceptance of this higher purpose for their relationship, the Spirit works with Frank and Amy and takes them all the way to the nice before escaping the world is that the world is not outside their own mind. This journey is an ascension through relationship by saying yes to the end of scenarios and rebellion and saying yes. The ego is the belief in, in autonomy, personal autonomy, and so interpersonal relationships seem to have that dualistic component of two relating, but actually it's just a mechanism that the whole says, you know, with any single person you can accept the atonement if you simply see them without the past. Just like we talked earlier about, you could receive with relationships. If you could look at a brother and a sister with no remembrance at all of the past, that's the same entry point into Christ's vision. So that's really the purpose of relationship. Grow something, it's not to build something, it's not to achieve something in time or accomplish something, it's simply to undo the blocks to the awareness of love's presence. A friend of ours, Frank, had basically told me, you need to tune in called Hang the DJ. So that's initially how I found it was through a tip from my friend Frank, and then I went in and I said, hmm, a little bit of slight editing here. This could be like a little masterpiece of spirit. It had seemed to be very mystifying, uh, very perplexing, uh, part of the great mystery of time and space. But once you start to realize, like many great teachers have said, that to have the same relationships, even though the form looks a little different. You've been in relationship with these same issues, mm -hmm. playing out these same issues in mind with, with characters, even though over time the form perspective 
it seems like it's with different people, but actually it's just the mind facing itself in a very destined way. The script is written, so all relationships are maximal. Nothing could have been, been any different. Nothing just maximal for the mirroring of, of the false beliefs to see what is it I still believe in and then to let go of all purposes except for forgiveness. And that's what the whole movie. Mm -hmm. Here we go. You know, it's, it's quite interesting to look at relationships from a meta metaphysical perspective, like what Jesus mentions in Lesson 158, the script is written. Imagine if all your written in a script, the, the, the length of them was predetermined, all the actions we predetermined, obviously their food, the fish cake, <laughs> and everything, the pasta girl, everything, the food was The menu choices are already selected, but it's a very different perspective if you started to, to look at it that way, because then you would just say, well then what's the point of the relationship if it's all predetermined? immediately start to come to watching your mind mm -hmm. and paying attention to your feelings, your th interpretations, your thoughts. Just like if you were watching a movie and the movie had a relationship in it and you just watch your, your interpretations as you watch the movie and that, that was the usefulness of watching the movie of the relationship. Mm -hmm. Can you see how different that is from thinking, I am an autonomous person, I don't want to be in relationship, I can choose when I want it to begin, or it seems to be somewhat that way, and when I want it to end, and so on and so forth. It's the autonomy, it's this ego autonomy of believing I have a Uh, I have my own set of private thoughts, my own ambitions, and my own personal history, and we're dealing with uh, something that seems to be very autonomous and independent. And then the relationships that are exclusive in this world. And in reality, Jesus is saying, if it's not all-inclusive, and it's not all-inclusive, universal, agape love, it isn't real. You're, you're hallucinating something, made-up, make-believe uh, fantasy, your own made-up fiction. And then also all the issues that you believe you have in the relationship are part of that fiction. All those upsetting emotions, stressful emotions, are also part of that fiction. that when we try to have a will apart from God and, and have a, an identity apart from God, it's very complex, it's filled with issues. Some of those issues seem to repeat over and over in other relationships. It's part of a projection. So this little episode tonight is kind of loosening from a lot of the typical beliefs about autonomy, personhood, and interpersonal relationships where you can of the seeming relationship. Uh, this is from a relationship app uh, called Coach, and a system that is supposed to be designed to bring about the perfect match, guaranteed. In one sense, it's more like uh, app is uh, attempting a, a personal perspective uh, and basically this movie is instead of attempting to be a person, this is attempting to be a person in a relationship and that's the construct of this world. That's what is taken as reality when it doesn't And we have to have this construct, this pursuit undone 
because until we have it undone, we're just kind of spinning our wheels with with the ego and and falling for its tricks and traps. That the relationship in form and the issues are in form, and that that's our problem to finding love. And and quickly we can jump into the next trap, which is I haven't found the right partner, and there must be an fulfillment and then there's the pursuit of that as well but that's also another loop another uh, ego loop designed to bring the mind into a sense of perfect unification on relationships in the manual for teacher and there is in the third level of, of relationships it's described as lifelong relationships and Jesus says where the teaching learning balance is actually perfect. So, in the design of how the Holy Spirit uses the relationships, and all relationships are maximal, but the whole point is to teach only love and, and have a conversion into an experience that I am only love. Spirit. It wasn't what I thought I made myself to be, or I invented myself to be with the ego, but I've been pure, pure love all along. So here we go. This is, this is cute. This is uh, Amy and Frank and, uh, and Coach. And they're just following along. You see their cute little uh, <laughs> ride they have there to their first, to their cottage. And they know that they have less than 12 hours. Mm -hmm. So the time is given on the app too for the length. So they they don't really know what the relationship is for, and that's that's a good kind of metaphor for this world because no human being knows the purpose of the relationship. If they knew completely, it wouldn't be a need for it. Uh, it would it would not be needed, but because there is not clear awareness of the purpose, then the relationship is drawing the mind into that purpose, that higher purpose. So, that without purpose, there is doubt and confusion, and there's a very strong awareness of the passage of time. And you know that when you're really in the joy of purpose, seems to be not in awareness, it, you know, it slips by without awareness. So, this montage is really showing that, you know, in the sense that if there's like a vibrational connection, then it's, there's not... With the and irritations and annoyances, you know, it's not necessarily something specific, it's not necessarily even the specific things that are perceived that are annoying, or this is the underlying belief in time itself that is heavy, because God didn't create linear time, so it's, that's what's being portrayed in the relationship, the passage of time, the sense of waiting. It could, things could be di better if they were different, and all the things that go into that. But it's just a beautiful montage that's showing that uh, that interpretation of time. Uh, and Jesus in the present moment and calling us into a unified purpose that he says uh, only a constant purpose can <clears throat> stabilize events. In other words, we will have seemingly variable perception We have a right-minded purpose, until we become right-minded, then everything is topsy-turvy. That's just the description of the human condition. And it's never really about the specifics, but it is about linear time and the belief in specifics. We're made by the ego and they are never satisfying. There's no uh, set of specific uh, circumstances or set of 
specific outcomes that that perfectly satisfy the by God. They're, they're just part of the, the projection of uncertainty, the projection of um, confusion. The projection, this world, this linear world, is a projection of self-doubt. And the only or who am I? And then underneath that one identity confusion comes all of the fatigue, all of the the struggle, all of the challenge, all of the conflict, all of the issues, all of the crisis, all in the mind. So we're seeing them using their uh, dating app a lot, but mainly they're just using it not so much for instruction now, they're just using it as the timekeeper. <laughs> How long <laughs> did I have relationship, you know, and that's probably not the best use of a dating app, you know. <laughs> it's not like having a little Sunboy's timekeeper, oh, okay, watching, wait, waiting for it to, the, the timer to go off. <laughs> so, he, he, Frank seems to be, going to be tempted to look at the, the coach for the expiration date, the expiry date. And it's interesting, what is the purpose of relationships? What is sought for in relationships? Most people would say, well, a sense of love, of intimacy, of connectedness, of a feeling of... of you look at those things, you say, well, what, what is it that is believed that would bring those experiences, and it comes up to this thing called continuity. About continuity, that seems to be real or true and, and worth devoting oneself to continuity. Because continuity seems to have a sense of connectedness and of harmony. Deeper into the teachings from Jesus, as he's saying that that the ego invented linear time. So the ego invented past, present, and future. It's a construct. It's not eternity to it. And the ego invented it, and then, as I said earlier this morning, I said, and then the ego tries to force continuity onto it. So you can see that it's, it's making a substitute for what is truly stuff. That's why people want continuity in relationships. It doesn't, the continuity doesn't have anything to do with time itself. It's a feeling inside. It's a longing for continuity, but as we saw in both months and, and one year, that if both of them were watching, looking at the coach, and couldn't wait for that time frame to end. So it wasn't the length of the relationship, but it was for continuity, and maybe continuity unfulfilled. And that's why the focus on time. So it starts to be more obvious that we either can train our mind to focus on the present moment. And Jesus is teaching us that's exactly this. It's the present moment. He says the present moment is the closest approximation that the, of eternity that this world offers. That's pretty strong. The present moment is the closest approximation this world offers. So now you can see why all the mystics and the saints, all the avatars, everybody was always focused on the present moment. Eckhart Tolle, the power of now, you know, it's just come through our teacher. And, and then we start to see that the ego is trying to make up a substitute for love, using its own uh, constructs, its own inventions. It's invented 
invent continuity for the near time, and it's literally trying to force continuity onto past, present, future. And Jesus is saying they don't go together. He's saying the past is gone, the future is but imagined. approximation to eternity. So clearly the continuity that's sought for, the love that's sought for, the eternal life that's sought for is only found in the present. And clearly the past, because I always say the past is, is gone, but the past for the ego's purposes, is just projected into the future. So you have the past past and the future past. And if the script is written, you get something you haven't led into awareness yet, but it's, it's just going to come up. But it's not going to ever satisfy. So that's why he says, be not content with future happiness. It's not your just reward. You can see it's, the whole journey is more, we can say it's hardly a journey, it's more of a, it's an inward movement and a dropping down and a letting go and a sinking into the present moment, which is really what prayer and meditation Of everything you think you think and think you know, to empty the contents of consciousness and come back to the light through that. You can see with them, they have like a vibration, there's like a connection or a flow you can feel with these. And yet, even though the first time they were together, they checked right away for their expiration date, and it was 12 hours, and they both were like, kind of short. Yeah, that is kind of short. And then they were awkward, and they kind of stumbled through their 12 hours, and, you know, didn't the system, you know, and so they did. And now, there's, there's that connection and flow there, and you can see though a little bit with Frank, where he's starting to glance over at, at the... And then before that, in another scene, he's kind of, he's kind of viewing it. And, and you can see that, that that's a good symbol in this little episode of the temptation of time. Whenever we're tempted, in terms of time, that is an egoic temptation. You know, how long will it last, or how, how has it been? Even valuations of relationships based on the past, or uh, expectations. You can see it's part of an addiction where there's a dependency going on, into the form. Uh, it's like this is equated with love and equated with continuity and then there's a dependency that goes People come up with things in the course like you, you really believe that to be with another body is companionship. He comes right out and says that in the course. You really is companionship. And yet, that is how you keep him in guilt. The belief in companionship is even part of the ego's Minds are joined, bodies do not. So you can see, it's not so much the companionship per se, but it's what's underneath it. It's the time. It's the belief in linear time, which companionship is a, is a time concept. He's giving us a course in emptying our mind of the contents of consciousness, including, uh, including time concepts. And, you know, there's, he mentions time concepts, there's one that he talks about called seeing, seeing a brother as if they're much farther along, they've achieved much more than they appear to in, in time. And it's still a time concept, but it's, it's actually a gift. If you, if you see somebody with charity, because you're actually offering a blessing mm -hmm. and overlooking whatever the form seems to be, it's actually a, a time concept that's a blessing. 
But as we move along, it's like more and more, you know, he's just going to be encouraging us. Uh, that's why he's a healed mind is relieved of the belief that it must plan. Relieved of the belief that it was planned. Well, planning is clearly, again, he's saying, the old mind is relieved of the belief that it must plan. It's a defense mechanism. It's, a, it's an insecurity. i got to plan the future so I'm safe. i got to plan the future so I'm secure. You know, it's another... There's that same lesson where Jesus talks about vision, and again, basically he's saying you can have vision, which we talked about earlier with the table, but you can have vision if you don't activate the past, plan the future. Again, he's giving us clues, like little clues, like little reminders. Here you go. Here's just to practice these things. Don't activate the past, organize the present, and plan the future. Permission to be still. More and more permission to go drop into stillness and let all things be exactly as they are. He's describing the whole world and the cosmos and everything as if it's trapped with an ingenious design, but that actually has a very devious, dark purpose to it. It's an ingenious design with a devious purpose, and he's slowly teaching us that basically, that right now you have in everything and are everything. And he's, that's the third lesson of the Holy Spirit, is equating having with being. We're used to other things. I have a, a partner, I have a house, I have a conversation, and Jesus is like, no, 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 I am what I am, and that's all that I am. That's actually the Holy Spirit coming through Popeye. That's <laughs> <laughs> Pocahontas, Popeye. So, the face of innocence. <laughs> what is everything? What is anything for? Do not know what anything is for. <laughs> but, but that's. It just shows. Us to is so different from all the goals that we've been accustomed to. So radically different. And here, they've come to like an agreement here to not check the. They have an agreement, but uh, it's it's actually quite a good agreement because it's almost like the agreement to not check the expiry date is basically saying. We're not going to put our focus on time. You know, it, it actually, if, if we do pull our attention away from time, as we go on more and more and become more and more intuitive, just accepting we're always at the right place at the right time, and that's a, a fact. We can relax into the fact that we're always in the right place at the right time. We don't have to try to be somewhere else, or even hypothetically think of another time, or think of the future. We can... Uh, he's got a little bit of a temptation there. He's lying in bed awake, and he is starting to be tempted to look at the expiration date. And that is, that is our to make illusions real. And what is linear time but an illusion? So the focus, the attention is starting to get drawn in, in that direction. Oh, the coach is ringing. So, 
of the relationships and the illusion of time just goes on and on and on. But, but what Jesus tells in the Course, he says, trust would settle every problem now. You know, he's like, yeah, I know that you're feeling like struggling with this time thing, but trust would settle every problem now. He's basically saying, it's your faith. If you have the, the faith, see, you can move mountains, you know, it's the faith. He told Thomas, you know, blessed are those who have seen and believed, and he's pointing to the wounds in his arms. You know, far greater blessed than those. He's always calling us to faith, calling us beyond the five senses, saying, this is the answer. This is your escape hatch. This is the way. This is the truth, the light. And so you can see here, it always has to come. Faith in our mind. Faith in the power of our mind. Faith in making a decision, I will accept atonement for myself, lesson 139, or heaven is a decision I must make, you know, he's, he's, heaven has to take the form of a choice, because it's not really a choice, but in your condition, you have to accept something in your mind, it's the correction, it's the solution, it's the way, And you must accept the power of your mind. You can't depreciate the power of your mind by looking to time for the solutions. You can see the frustration uh, for both Amy and Frank. You know, they're, they're both very... He said, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. He's basically saying that your relationship with God is the solution to whatever problem you perceive. Love. It's against God. It was made as a defense, as a denial of, of God and God's love. So here we go, we can watch these two that that they they had their first coming together, their first joyful. They had their second one, which was flowing along quite well until the temptation to look at the expir expiration date. One, not both of them looking together, just her, destabilizing it down, down, down. And as it came down, you can see his fear level went up, 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 and then he hit it, and then when he finally shared it, she's like, what, why didn't you tell me? I didn't want to ruin It was like hiding and protecting a secret is never going to be helpful for us uh, if we're opening to love, a love that has no secrets. So here we go, they're getting ready to uh, kick into the faith of all problems. <laughs> so this is lesson 50, I am sustained by the love of God. This is Lesson 76, I am under a And they're just basically saying, okay, it's not about doing something that fits in the system. It's about letting go of the rules to the world and accepting the guidance. Going on trust, going on 100% intuition and letting go of the past. And the past is the system. Everything that has checks and balances, including the duality of perfect match, the system of time, perfect match, matches two. And they're basically onto it now, that this is it. And, you know, basically that, that are rebelling together, they're rebelling against going to follow their intuition, are rebelling together is the way we pass the test or 
break the way. Follow no laws but God's. Go for 100% intuition, 0% analytical, 0% rule. Here they go! <laughs> 1,000 simulations completed, 998 rebellions lost. So, in the end, like they thought, system, but they were saying yes to uh, God. I guess we gotta let me go of all the rules of the world, all of the, the ego laws. And then the simulations were, they up, up they went like bubbles. <laughs> All released to the light. Yeah. It's a powerful symbol of, of oneness at the end. It would be the final step of, of letting go. Because we, the first uh, episode we watched, you know, it was kind of like the, the characters starting to since they didn't like the way, they didn't like to be part of something else that was greater than them, that was controlling them, and yet they tried to rebel as persons to find a way to escape. But this, this was more of the actual... From the world I see uh, by giving it back to us. And that, you know, that's what they were doing at the end, just going totally into the trust, totally into faith and, and letting go. And even the symbols, you know, the, the, the whatever those things were meant to be determined, you know, there was nothing. You know, it was <laughs> there and then and pushed down and then the whole defense mechanism just froze up like it wasn't. So, just that denial. There's one part in the Course where Jesus says, deny the denial of truth. There it was, deny the denial of truth. Don't let any form scare you. Jesus was good at level of that. Accepting the resurrection, accepting the atonement, and then oh, the form could lay out. It can seem to involve a trial, it can seem to involve a cross. The fact of it, the fact of I am as God created me, that's the, that's the fact. The rest is uh, immature. <laughs> Irrelevant. <laughs> Those are very unusual little uh, episodes, but yeah, very strong. Yeah. And the tears of the angels. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much, David. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Did uh, Jugita make it? You're so here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he was here for that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, beautiful. That was beautiful when you were saying, your husband, your son, is here, this person. Yeah, I can actually share a little bit about that. I I'm not sure if, it's, if, if, if the movie brought me a little bit into that, but I was just observing the stories of my husband with my son coming through the darkness, through these roads, and the stories of them and just being killed or whatever, dying, just the, like some kind of, like, out of nowhere. And I just invited spirit and went 
deep, very and it came back to this place of gratitude. We are not here. We are not here. We are not here. And the tears started coming down. And I feel at peace now. I want God's will be done. So, however it has to look, I really want it because I really want to. I really and nothing else. Mm. Yeah, and soon after that, after I really came to that peace and acceptance. You said your husband and your and son is here. Yeah. No, no. And I didn't ask them. I didn't about it. It just said your and I, I looked around. I'm like, what is going on? What, what are you saying? Like I was here. What are you saying? I, I don't understand because I have no idea what is going on. So thank you. Thank you for letting go. Mm-hmm. It was just so, so beautiful. Mm-hmm. Like I feel this rush of energy, just like oh, I'm so grateful. Mm-hmm. That's the lesson right there. Mm-hmm. Okay. I will be done. Yeah. <laughs> there, there is no other. Less than uh, the Bible will be done, yeah. And it's a yeah. yeah, really, that's really my, the, the prayer of yeah. my heart, really, just to, just to be so aware and to be so grateful. I really had these, this profound gratitude for just all of you. I really feel in my heart, this is God. And this is my lesson, and they are just playing this role for me. No one really needs to be saved but myself. Like, you're all in heaven, in my mind. Mm-hmm. And I'm the last one. Just me. Mm-hmm. And there's just, just, I can't express it in words, really. Mm-hmm. It's so beautiful. Mm-hmm. It's like it's totally within. I will be done, it's totally within. It's not. The form. If the form really becomes irrelevant to the that that will be done. Yeah. And Jesus even wrote a little pamphlet supplement called the um, the Song of Prayer. It's like a ladder, and at the very top of the ladder, the last prayer is, Father, what is your will for me? That's the, that's where the ladder ends, and then it's like a, just emerging with. Uh, Jenny spoke what she spoke, and then I saw you slowly get up and. I don't know anything you said. I don't know anything, <laughs> which is, of course, the expression of the prayer of the heart. I don't know anything. No, that's that's. How you were almost like you weren't oriented. You were just in the flow of, of everything. And then, yeah, thank you for sharing the rest of the two of this, because okay. that's everything I will be done. Thank you. <laughs> 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 and the rain came down to a hush. <laughs> As you spoke of it. Well, that fits perfectly with the, our title. Do not see here. Make it real in awareness. I will be done. Is, is it? That's, I will be done. God, my will is your will, and your will is my will. It's a, it's a it's acknowledgement of a shared will, not a, a, an attempt to say I have a different word from you, but I have a will. Because will 
It's just, it's for happiness. That's where it title to that happiness. It's, it's God's will for us. It's like saying yes to happiness. Saying no to the search for it. In, in form. And, uh, and uh, the constitution liberty of the pursuit of happiness. This is the United States Constitution. Because I mentioned the word pursuit. <laughs> Doesn't really go with that thing, it's pursuit. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you all. We have you. our session tomorrow. Yeah, we can join and maybe we'll let you go and we'll talk about kind of the morning and the morning and how it will flow. Okay. Yeah. But we have we'll be gathered here at 10 tomorrow. Is anyone on a jack uh, down to the college because of the rain? We have David in the park. Is it over there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So, the beer was there before it's coming. Thank you. 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 Thank you.